Hey guys, I'm, I think I'm back. Hopefully you guys can get back on. Facebook kicked me off, maybe because I was talking about God. I don't know. So if you guys are back on, can you guys jump on here real quick? Um, let me see if you're back on. Okay. Hey, come on guys. We got to get back because the enemy doesn't like us talking about the Holy Spirit. The enemy doesn't like us talking about revival. So come on, let's just jump back on. Let me know that you guys are here right now. Thanks for getting back on. Come on, just thumbs up. The enemy always hates it when we talk about revival and when we talk about the spirit of the living God. So I'm going to just go ahead and start over um, and just we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the movement of the Holy Spirit. And I began sharing before we were cut off how there was a movement of the Holy Spirit in the 70s. And we called it the Jesus Movement. And it fled across America. It fled across our country. And churches were waking up and people were waking up. And as I started to share with you, soldiers were coming back from Vietnam and getting saved simply by the Spirit of the living God. There was a hovering presence of the Holy Spirit over our country. And it was the greatest movement of revival in our country. And I've been praying for that. I've been praying now for really a couple years. God, I want to see a revival like that. I want to see a revival like that. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. And so as I was walking this afternoon or this morning when I got up, I'm like, God, I want to see a revival like we saw in the 70s. I want to see what we called the Jesus movement, like what we saw in the 70s. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, move. And so I began praying that. And every time I'm walking, I just pray the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit would be present and he would fall on us and they were just, he would breathe on us and he would move on us. So as I was praying that, I thought about the passage um, in in First Kings that it's talking about Elijah, and it's in. in I'm going to talk about it with you a little bit. It's in chapter 17, and Elijah says something that's really good. In, in First Kings 17, he said, "So Elijah did as the Lord told him to do." Now stay with me, guys, because I really believe God's got something here. Elijah did as the Lord told him to do. And that's the first thing I think we need to talk about today. God wants to speak. God wants to teach. God wants to move. But we have to be under the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have to have a listening ear. We have to call on him. And when I was walking today, I'm calling on him. And I'm asking him, show me what to do. Lead me, guide me, teach me, speak through me. Let me know what to do. And just like he said, he said, Elijah, did as the Lord told him to do. And if you go through chapter 17 of 1 Kings, you see how Elijah was led by the Spirit. And there was this um, this horrible, um, kind of like what it was, was um, there was no water and there was a drought. And yet God provided for Elijah in the drought. It's so cool. The Bible says that the raven came and fed him with bread and fed him with meat and then led him by a brook that he drank water. And the more you read through the story of Elijah, you see that because he said, Lord, I hear you, Lord, lead me. You begin to see this prophet as he moves. He's guided by God. Go here, go there, go here, go there. Then you get to chapter 18 of First Kings, and that's where we have the story of Mount Carmel. Normal. And he is the spokesperson. He doesn't mind speaking out for God. And this is what I think is so important that we talk about today. Don't be afraid to speak up and speak out for God. This was a prophet of God. And I think we need more prophets of God. I think we need to raise up prophets in the church. And we need, when the Holy Spirit gives you a word, speak it, share it. Now, I'm not saying that we're all prophets. I'm not trying to um, give you guys a mantle of being a prophet, but a prophet is just someone sent with a message. Someone sent with a message. And I believe that when the Holy Spirit shows you something from the word of God, that you share that, that you're led by it, that you listen to it, that you embrace it as truth. So as we begin to read through the story of Elijah in 1 Kings 17 and now 1 Kings 18, and here's what we need to talk about today. They get to Mount Carmel. And there's the showdown of the prophets and there's the prophets of Baal, the false gods, and then the prophets of God and there's Elijah and there's this war between who can call down fire from heaven, who can call down fire from heaven. And Elijah looks and he looks at them and he said, you have intermingled with the gods of this world. And that's what hit me with this passage. This at one time, these were people that were followers of Yahweh, but they had begun to intermingle with the gods of the land. And I just feel like we have intermingled with the gods of the land. We don't follow Yahweh God. It's whatever anybody's saying. There's what there's all these voices and everybody's equal. And let's don't step on any toes. And it's what I like to call easy believism. Oh, we're just gonna all get there. 
I mean, God loves everybody. And I'm telling you what, and I think in our culture, we have had this easy believism and we've in, intermingled with the gods of our land. And I believe as I read through 1 Kings 18, exactly what um, Elijah said, look what he says, I'm gonna read it to you. And they called him the troubler of Israel because every time he showed up, God showed up. And they feared him because God showed up every time he showed up. And they called him the troubler of Israel. And Elijah replied, I am not the trouble of the troubler of Israel. You are the ones who have left the commandments of the Lord. And then he says, he went before the people and he said, how long will you waver between two opinions? How long will you waver? How long will you intermingle between two opinions? Listen, if the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. Who are you following? And I think we live in this world where we don't want to be offensive to anybody. We don't want to step on anybody's toes. We just want to make it Jesus easy right now. Listen, I believe this is a wake up call. I believe that God is calling his church and purifying his church. And when I read through the Old Testament stories and the prophets, and I look at this Elijah and I go, God, would I have been strong like that? Would I have stood before the people and said, stand behind your God? What I've thrown down the gauntlet and said, if Yahweh is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. And I think what I want to say to you right now is, guys, you have to decide who are you following. You are, some of you, quarantined in your homes right now for a purpose and for a season. It's time for you to get on your face before God. It's time for you to get alone and pull out the Bible. It's time for you to teach your children how to listen and hear this isn't just Sunday school that's teaching your children. It's not just church. You are the parents. You are the ones who are teach your children how to hear from God, how to see God, how to feel and sense God. This is a time you get to do this. I believe there's a supernatural waking up of the church. And I shared with you at the beginning of our time together before we were cut off on Facebook just now that there was a movement in the 70s called the Jesus Movement. And here's what I believe. We need to do our part but God will do his part. We can't do what only God can do. We can position ourselves so when the Spirit of God comes, we've set our sails to drift toward him, to move toward him. We can't bring revival, but we can be ready for revival. And that's what we've got to talk about today, guys. If we begin to pull together, join together in a mighty way as women of influence, as families of influence, and we begin to pray for revival, we'll see revival in our land. Just now as I was coming here and I was listening uh, to Fox News, I listened to it in my car, and they were talking about the food lines that are lining up all over the country. There's food lines. And not that there's a food shortage. We don't have a shortage yet, but there are food lines because of so much un unemployment. And here at Influence Church, we're putting together boxes of food to feed our community. But you guys, right now there is a readiness for people to hear from God. There's a readiness for people to hear from the church. It's time for us not to only shine in acts of kindness and good deeds, but in the word of God and in the spirit of God. Don't be afraid to pray for people. Don't be afraid to love people. Don't be afraid to use the word of God. You've got to know the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you've not put anything in your heart, you're not going to have anything to share. So you need to be memorizing scripture, learning scripture, quoting scripture, because when that atmospheric presence of the Lord comes, when that revival sweeps over our land, and it is coming, Holy Spirit is coming, he is hovering, the heavens are getting ready to open up, the rains are beginning to, to come. I was just listening to Kim Walker sing, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, and I'm just singing, let it rain, Holy Spirit, let it rain and what he's doing he's preparing us the church so our job is just like Elijah's job throw down the gauntlet and say to yourself who's your God who are you following stop intermingling with the world separate yourself be sanctified we are called to be sanctified and that word means to be set apart for a holy purpose now is our time now is our time. People are listening. People are looking. I'm telling you what, I'm so proud of our president who's calling together faith-based leaders around him to pray about around him. And yesterday when he was asked in the Oval Office about who's praying around him, and he said, evangelicals, believers. And he said, there, there are priests and there are rabbis and there are evangelical pastors and they're praying around us and they're praying for our country. We are listening for the first time, we're listening for the Spirit of God to move. Our job, 
Our job is to be ready when the Spirit of God comes. We call on Spirit of God. We believe on Spirit of God. We allow, we pray that the heavens would open up. And that's what we've been talking every day at noon together. We come together because we're in unity and we're saying, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Today when I was walking this morning and I was thinking about you guys and what I was going to share, and Holy Spirit just said, what about you? You, Tammy, you. And I, I just spent time walking as much as I wanted to be prepared and talk to you guys and bring a message and pray with you. I have to consecrate myself. I have to sanctify myself. I have to be a prayer warrior, me. I'm responsible first for me. And let me tell you guys, I love you and I want to do this with you. And I'm so excited we are women of influence. But we have to individually be ready for Holy Spirit to speak to us, to use us, to anoint us. And when there is this force where we are individually strong, then we come together corporately and there is a movement. So it's got to start individually before it becomes corporate. It's got to start individually before it becomes corporate. So my, my question to you right now is, are you filled with the spirit of the living God? Now listen, it's hard right now. It is so hard because we are, um, you know, we're, we're too close with one another, maybe sometimes in our family and in our homes with our spouses and our children, and we're frustrated and we feel combined and we think we're going nuts. But I'm telling you what, that's why the Bible says to draw aside. Go outside and sit in your backyard. Go outside and sit in your front yard. Get up a half hour early. Just go for a walk in your neighborhood. Do something, but get alone with God. So here's what I believe I want to pray for today. I think it's so good. This is what God spoke to me. He said, first of all, for personal revelation. Personal revelation. When I was walking down my street today, I said, God, give me personal revelation. I'm listening to lots of sermons and I'm looking at great posts and that's awesome. But what's God personally saying to me? And I began to just praise him. I listened to music and I was walking and I said, God, give me revelation. Give me wisdom. And I'm just talking to him and he's giving me thoughts and he's giving me passages and he's reminding me of things. See, this is how you have a personal relationship with God. I'm teaching you this right now. Listen, you begin to say, God, speak to me. And you begin to talk. And you just talk to him, God, I love you and I praise you and I worship you. And before long, a scripture will come to you or you'll see something in nature and he'll speak to you. A song will come to you. And then you say, thank you for that, God. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for showing me that. That's how you begin to develop a personal relationship. And that's how you have personal encounters. So our first prayer today is that you would have personal revelations from God. Number two, we're going to pray that the Spirit of God would move over our country, over our land, and over our globe. We want to pray for revival. I pray that in 2020 that there is a supernatural revival like we've not seen in years, that what the Jesus movement was was just a glimpse of what's getting ready to happen in 2020. So I want to pray right now that you would join me in this, that there would be a move of the Spirit of God and begin to just see it. God, show me. Show me what it looks like when the spirit moves, when there's healing in our homes, when there's healing in our hearts, when there's healing in our nation. That's what the spirit of God looks like. So begin to pray that right now. Join me in praying that. And then I want to pray for this, that there's protection over us over the next two weeks to one month. Our president is telling us that one of the greatest outbreaks may be coming over the next two weeks. So we want to pray right now that there will be a protection over our houses, our homes, our families, over our churches and our nations and the world. These are three specific requests that we're going to pray for today, that you would have a personal, spiritual revelation from God that we would see a corporate move of the living God and that we would have protection over our families and our homes over the next two weeks. That's what we're going to pray about right now. Would you join me as we pray? Father God is worth this wall right now. We just pray for a mighty, mighty movement, God. God, you showed me this morning in my prayer time that I've got to be praying individually, that I've got to have fresh revelation and fresh manna, that you want to speak to me and you want to walk with me and you want to talk with me, that when I listen, you speak, that when I cry out, you hear me, that you use the word of God to minister to me, you use songs to speak to me. So teach us how to have individual relationships with you. I pray for every 
woman and man on this feed right now, that as they begin to cry out and call out, that they would have divine, divine revelation and that they would learn how to pray, speak, and hear from you. And almighty God, we pray for a fresh encounter. You literally, the spirit of the living God, pray with me now, come on, pray with me, that the spirit of the living God would flow over our nation like never before, that this would be a revival, this would be a revival, and that's what happens, the spirit of the living God brings revival. We don't bring revival, he brings revival. But I pray, Father, that we would be prepared, that when revival comes, we are the spokesperson, we are the one ready to lead others to Christ. That it's our witness and our, our testimony. So hear our prayer for revival over our land. Heal our land. Protect our land. Use our land as a voice. God, use us like you have in the past in a mighty way. And almighty God, almighty God, we pray right now that you would stop this virus. That the, the prophetic words, that the, the worst is coming, God, that the wave that is coming, stop it. Let it be a miracle. Let us look to you just like you used Elijah. And he said, God, use me, here am I. We pray that, God. Use us, here we are. It said you led him, you fed him, you used him. He called out, he called out this, this command, choose whom you will serve. And so, God, we're saying that right now. Use us right now and stop this deadly disease. Stop this virus in Jesus' name. God, we want to get the good out of this crisis. And we know you are using it. We've said over and over that you will use what the enemy brings and cause it for good. And you are waking up your church. You're stirring your church. So as we pray together at this wall, God, you never get tired of hearing us pray. You never get tired of our prayer over and over and over again. We're consistent with our prayer time at noon. We come every day at noon and we pray revival, peace, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit of the living God, salvations in our country. God, we just thank you for what you're doing. And we continue to pray for first responders, for doctors and nurses, for our policemen and our firefighters and all of those that are going out. God, I pray for those in, in a retail and all the stores that are meeting our needs, God. Protect them in Jesus' name. Stop this virus in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We praise you. Now, my, my feeling right now as we're listening, guys, is that this, just like, go back and read 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 18, and begin to look at the life of Elijah. And just as Elijah said, use me, I'm going to ask you to say, God, use me, use me, lead me, direct me, guide me, and believe you've got a prophetic word today. Speak a prophetic word from the word of God. Use the word of God with scriptures. Share songs and hymns and spiritual songs with one another. God is moving in a mighty way. Revival is coming. Call it out. Prophesy it out. Speak it out. When you go on those walks, call revival. See revival. Call heaven to earth because revival is coming. Salvation is coming. A new movement is coming. It's 2020 and God's doing a new thing. As I'm at this wall, I want to thank you for sending prayer requests. Lisa, I put yours in the wall. Uh, Anime, I put yours in the wall. Several of you are sending me prayer requests, and I'm putting those in the wall. Thank you guys for getting back on. I know we were cut off on Facebook, uh, but we want to continue right now praying. Um, Wendy, praying, I see your name. Uh, Valerie, I love you, girl. Love you so much. You mean the world to me. Pastor Phil said you text him. Thank you for that sweet text. Love you guys. Emmy, thank you for sharing um, all that you do, all those great posts that you do. But guys, the greatest thing we, we can do now is, is pray in unity for revival. For revival. Revival means renewal. Renewal. Bringing us back to our first love. Re remember, revival is for believers. Salvation is for the lost. Do you hear me? Revival is for the believer salvation is for the lost and so when revival comes to the believer salvation comes to the lost Woo, that's good that'll preach when revival comes to the believer salvation will come to the lost and that's what we have to do we have to pray for a spirit of revival in our land i love you guys so much i appreciate you so much god is doing a fresh work and a new work can't you feel it i want to encourage you guys to share um, if you would even go down right now and share this button, 
because it's important that we come together. I'd love to just see thousands of people joining together at noon at this prayer wall. I love you guys. Pray those things over your own life, over your family's life. Be safe, be smart, and be the church. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow at noon at the wall. Have a great day. God bless.